post-trib moment number 31. And here he pulls a little another another one of these little tricks, uh, making it sound like everybody who teaches a pre-trib rapture teaches the same thing. It's, and it, again, it's not true. Let's see here. Oh, I don't see how hour of temptation can translate into seven years of tribulation, but that's what they believe. Okay, now what he's saying here is, in Revelation 3.10 it says about, you know, if because you've kept the word of God, I will keep you from the hour of temptation. I'm paraphrasing, but that's what it says. And <clears throat> some of the brethren say, well, this hour of temptation there is the time of Jacob's trouble. And he says, well, I don't see how hour could translate into seven years. Well, again, he's doing this very um, simplistic interpretation where it's the day of, you know, trouble just means a day you know the, the time of Jacob's trouble you know it's a day it says there in Jeremiah 30 verse 7 so it's only hit one day which is absurd when you look at the context and the hour how could an one hour be seven years again this is ridiculous I'm trying to interpret it this way but uh, we'll continue here a little bit even though that's not what the verse says but a couple things about this verse that prove that theory to be wrong is that number one the prerequisite for being kept from the hour of temptation is keeping God's word. The Bible says, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. Well, you don't have to keep God's word to be saved. You uh, yes, you do. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Uh, if you don't believe the word of God, I don't believe you're saved. Just as simple as that. I, be I believe Bible-believing Christians are the only ones that are going to get into heaven. You call God a liar. Uh, God has magnified his word above his name. You call God a liar. Uh, you're not going to be saved. It's as simple as that. If you don't believe the written scripture, then no, you're not going to be saved. You say, well, that's work salvation. No, it isn't. It's salvation according to scripture. Okay? And, and this guy's salvation messages are messed up as well. But I'm just going to skip ahead here. <clears throat> I want to show you something else he says. The church at Philadelphia. So if Revelation 3.10 is supposedly about the rapture, why is it spoken to the Church of Philadelphia if that is supposedly a period of time? Now, he's making a valid point here. He's saying if the seven churches are seven periods of time in church history, which there is instruction in righteousness, by the way, there. Uh, there is some truth to that, but it doesn't work out perfectly. I don't teach that as Bible doctrine. I teach it as instruction in righteousness. Okay, but there's also something else about those seven churches in the book of Revelation, uh, chapters 2 and 3. And that is that those seven churches are also seven different types of Christians. Again, let me just show you a verse here. This is where I'm getting this from, just so you can't say, oh, it sounds like heresy. You know, uh, no, I went to the wrong one. Second Timothy, I'm thinking here. Okay, notice right here. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for four things. Doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness. For instruction in righteousness. Okay? That the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. But right here, instruction in righteousness. You can use any scripture you want for instruction in righteousness. You have to be careful about doctrine. Getting your doctrine from places that are not pointed to Christians in the church age, but instruction in righteousness, you can use Revelation 2 through 3 for instruction in righteousness. Okay, but to teach it doctrinally, yeah, I don't I don't teach it doctrinally to prove a pre-trib rapture. I don't need to. Okay, but let's I want to conclude with something else that he says here. That is already passed. Well, the bottom line is all of this is false doctrine. The truth of the matter is that the church at Philadelphia was a literal church located physically in a town called Philadelphia had nothing to do with church ages or periods of time that's all a man-made false doctrine no it's instruction in righteousness it's not doctrine it's instruction in righteousness and he's too shallow of a student of, Bi of the Bible he's a novice he doesn't understand things like that taught by Schofield and others it's not real and the hour of temptation has nothing to do with the seven-year tribulation whatsoever because there is no seven-year tribulation. Uh-huh. Okay, so then when the Bible talks about three and a half years being the middle point of the tribulation, you know, a time and times and half a time, over and over and over in Scripture, 
Um, there's no seven-year tribulation. Uh, actually, there's no tribulation at all. If you want to use that title, the Great Tribulation. I've been saying this over and over and over again. The time of Jacob's trouble, Daniel's 70th week. That time there is a seven-year period. I'm awfully sorry to this little heretic here, but it is a seven-year period.